one more time for our warriors. <clears throat> Moms, we do see you. And today is not just Mother's Day, but every day is Mother's Day. And you are much appreciated. We cannot say thank you enough for all that you do. We thank you most of all for sparing our lives as kids. Amen? Because how many times you threatened us that I brought you into this world and I could take you out of it. And we just want to say thank you that you never fulfilled that promise. And um, as Mother's Day is not my funnest day to preach. It's, it's really not. It's, it's always a difficult Sunday for me to preach. And, um, um, but I know it's, it has to be preached. Amen? And um, it's like, unlike it's the same as any other Sunday, but again, we just set this day aside every year uh, for our moms, and we just want to say thank you, moms, and, um, and we have a free gift for you, and um, just our small way of just showing how much we appreciate you, and um, it's nothing in comparison to what you guys do, because um, we figured it out that we could not afford you if we had to pay you for everything you do. Um, you're a lawyer. You are a, uh, you're a mediator, you are a referee, you still take care of your husbands, so you have more than the kids that you have, you still have your spouse as well, and um, so you are still taking care of all of us, and we just want to say thank you, and, and, and I want to just share some, um, some humor with you this morning, and hopefully that this will help you, and um, this is my favorite one, it's my mom says, my my mom says my prayers for me. This is coming from a little boy who went to his pastor. And he said, the young boy was telling his pastor that his mother said his prayers for him each night. What do you mean your mother says your prayers for you? The minister inquired. The youngster replied, when mom tucks me in, she always says, thank God he's in bed. <laughs> Any of you moms been there? Amen. Some of you are still there. Amen. Amen. A mother's resolutions, and again, moms, a lot of you will appreciate this because you've been there. When I forget to go to the grocery store, I will not boil the macaroni necklaces my children made for me in preschool. <laughs> All right? All right. I will resist the urge to explain to strangers why my son is wearing winter boots, a bathing suit bottom, inside-out backward pajama top. I will be grateful that he is able to dress himself. Amen. I will always protect the rights of my children, especially their right to remain silent. <laughs> I will learn to accept the outbursts and tantrums as a part of life. After all, I promise to love my husband for better or for worse. <laughs> I should have heard a whole lot of amens from the moms and the wives on that one. When my, <laughs> this is my favorite one for the resolutions, I got to admit. When my husband and I, because I, I see this, I see this in moms doing this. Um, and wives doing this. When my husband and I go to a restaurant without the kids, I will not roll up his sleeves or move the knives from his reach. I will not accompany him to the bathroom and remind him to wash his hands with soap. If my husband wants dessert at the end of the meal, I will not tell him it depends on his behavior. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, moms. And then one more, and we'll get into our message this morning. Two kids told mom not to cook for Mother's Day that they would do it. Nine pots, two skillets, four large bowls, 11 spoons, five measuring cups, and one whole roll of paper towels later, mom said that was the best jello I ever had. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So, so moms, be thankful for that jello you get this afternoon, all right? Your kids put a lot of hard work into that, a labor of love uh, to make that jello for you guys. If you have your Bibles, turn real quick, guys, to 2 Timothy chapter 1. And moms, I, I really want to encourage you today, because as we saw in that video, I, I would almost guarantee you that, you know, every mom here struggles in one of those areas that, that we showed up on that screen this morning. And we don't take that lightly. And, and again, we know that, again, Mother's Day is difficult. Um, I told the 8 o'clock crowd, I've received messages from two moms uh, last night and this morning just, just saying, Pastor, I can't come to church today or tomorrow uh, because Mother's Day is just very hard for me. And Guys, I completely understand that, and I truly believe God understands that. 
I'm not going to be one of these guys that says, you know, church is the best place for you to be. I'm just not going to say that. Again, people grieve differently. And um, I know, again, this is why it's so difficult to preach on Mother's Day, because I know there's some that have lost their mother. I know there's some that have lost their, their children. And so it's a difficult, difficult Sunday to preach. But what I want to focus on today is, is, and again, one of the gifts that we're giving away today, or given to our mothers today, is a picture frame. And so I'm going to preach on the portrait of a godly mother. And there's so many different areas that, that makes a, a mother godly. But I want to just focus on just three areas today to really hope and pray that it helps you and encourages you as moms today to, to be that mother of God, to be that woman of God that, that, that your children need in their mother. 2 Timothy chapter, chapter, chapter 1 and verse number 5. I love what Paul says. He says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy who? Thy grandmother, Lois, and thy mother, Eunice. And again, if you know anything about Timothy's life, you know Timothy was a disciple of the Apostle Paul. And again, the Apostle Paul brought, to, I mean, he nurtured Timothy, he, he pr prayed with Timothy, he taught Timothy, he discipled Timothy. He played a, a, an instrumental part in young Timothy's life. But before Paul even shows up in Timothy's life, we see from the Word of God who had great influence in young Timothy's life. Even before Paul shows up, his grandmother and his mother played a very instrumental part in Timothy's life. And when I read this verse of, uh, verse of Scripture, it also reminds me, too, that as we had this baby dedication and as we think about kids, the vast importance it is, as, as us as parents especially, that we teach our children as soon as possible the ways of God. Because, again, your chances diminish the longer and longer you go without teaching your kids the, way of, the ways of God for them, number one, to be saved, which, by the way, is the most important decision your child will ever make. You know why? Because it's the most important decision that you will ever make. We can, we can make great choices and, and, this, and teach our children to make great choices and decisions and wise decisions, but if we don't teach our children to make the greatest decision they'll ever make and to place their faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Jesus alone for their eternal life, we have failed miserably as parents. And we have failed miserably as a church. So again, understanding the importance, yes, we're thankful for the Apostle Paul's influence in Timothy's life, but again, we're reminded from 2 Timothy chapter 1 that the, the most important part of Timothy's life was his grandmother and his mother. The great influence, and again, as you read this, you can almost picture them sitting around a fire, and you can almost hear grandma just, just, just reading the scriptures, and you can, you can almost see mom just reading scripture to Timothy and praying over them. And moms, again, I want to encourage you, and not just moms, but dads as well, parents as a whole. This isn't just the portrait of a godly mother, but this could be a portrait of godly parents as a whole. And so the three thoughts, just real quick, and I promise we won't, we won't hold you here long today. So again, what makes a godly mother? Number one, a godly mother loves her children. Amen. Now, again, you, you think about a mom loving her children. And I, I, just like I told the 8 o'clock crowd, and you know, I'm a dad of seven kids. I know I just celebrated my 28th birthday yesterday, so it's hard to believe I got two, seven kids. <laughs> Y'all believe that, right? Amen? Y'all are pitiful. <laughs> I need a new kind of maybe just, just terrible. I understand how much I love my kids, but guys, again, I, I think about the love that I have my kids, and again, it's a, it's a great, deep love. But guys, you cannot explain a mother's love for her children. You, you just can't. There's just something different about it. Because, again, the, 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 the kids feel like they have to earn or gain dad's love. I have to be a great athlete for dad to love me. I have to get gr good grades for dad to love me. But, again, the expectation from mom is that mom loves me. But, again, in Titus chapter 2, Paul is once again reminding Titus that, you know what? The, the wife is to love her husband and to love her children. And it's almost a sad verse to think that moms have to be told to love their children. And wives to have to be told to love their, their spouses. And again, when we talk about love, guys, I'm not talking about you love your children when they're obedient. Amen? Amen. Because we would never love our kids. <laughs> Somebody said that's right. That's, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding. But guys, again, the, the love that we have for our kids is not based on condition and what they do for us or what the, you know, how gifted or talented they are. The Bible commands us to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And to do what? To love your neighbors yourself. Who are our closest neighbors? 
your children and your spouse are your closest neighbors. So start there. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, and then love your neighbor yourself, starting with your spouse and starting with your kids. But again, moms, don't, don't say, you know what, I love my kids when they're doing the dishes or when their room's clean. Or Now, we, we like them a lot better when that's happening, right? Amen? But again, that love is based on, and again, Christ commands us more than once, guys. The love that I have for you is the same kind of love that you are to show men. Now, think about that for a second. The love that Christ has for, for each and every one of us is that same love that we are to, to show others. Starting with your wife and your children. Or your spouse and your children. But moms, again, the, the portrait, when you put that frame, when you put that picture frame in, and you're seeing the, the, the portrait of a godly mother, it has to start with loving your children. Love them unconditionally. Because guess what? Your children will disappoint you. You know why? Because we as parents disappoint our children. Can I get a witness this morning? Amen. We do, guys. We disappoint God. And guess what? God's love for us doesn't change because we disappoint him. Amen? His, he still loves us unconditionally even when we disappoint him. And the last time I checked, the minute I gave my life to God, to Christ, I became a child of God. And he loves me unconditionally. He doesn't say, I love you when you're serving me. I love you when you're reading my word. I love you when you're praying. I love you when you're in church. No, he says, you know what? I love you even when you disappoint me. Guys, there is such, and, and again, it's, I'm not just saying outside the, the church. I'm talking about inside the church. There, there is such a, a pressure on kids to, to make good grades and to play sports and you know, to do all these things because everybody else is doing it. And so the parents fall into that trap that, you know what? Listen, I'm going to love this kid more because you know, he makes great grades. Where's my, where's my boy Micah? Where? Where? In the bathroom. Is that what somebody just said? <laughs> I, I love my son. <laughs> oh, I love my son Micah. Well, I can do this now since he's not in here. And, and my wife's here with us this morning, too. If you ask us what one of our children drive us the most crazy... Micah. <laughs> Case in point, they were, pray, they were praying for me yesterday and for the meal and everything else for my birthday. And so we had this bright idea to let Micah pray. So he's praying, you know, thank God that, you know, you gave my dad another year. And hopefully he's got, what do he say, some more juice in, the, in his batteries and, you know. <laughs> Help him that he's got he's 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 got one leg and you know so and I'm like is he really praying all this? You gave him another year and I and I and I pray that you give him other years more years. I'm thinking I cannot believe this kid's praying like this. <laughs> and then I woke up this morning and I go upstairs wake my kids up because I told them I said I want every one of you up before I leave to go to the first service and I want you coming downstairs making sure Mother's Day you go outside on the back porch tell mom Happy Mother's Day. I go to wake McKenna up. There is toilet paper all in her bed. So my first thought was, McKenna, what in the world did you do? And she said, this is Micah. <laughs> so where did Micah go? Because I need to talk to you after church, son. <laughs> but, but again, and you know what? My first thought was, I'm mad at him. And then my next thought was, he is so much like his father. <laughs> How can I not love the boy? He's so much like his dad. And it drives me crazy sometimes that he is so much like his dad. And then I, then I get a card with all my kids and signed it. And he writes in there, you know, Dad, you're my hero, and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> you know, throw all the toilet paper you want, son. No. Veronica's like, no, I'm not his hero, you are. But guys, you know what? My love for Micah doesn't diminish or my love for any of my children diminish when they drive me crazy. And I promise you this, Veronica's sitting right here, her love for her children doesn't diminish when they drive her crazy. And I say all that to say this, is that his love for us doesn't diminish when we drive him crazy. Amen. I promise you this, guys, I have done things that God looks at me and just shakes my head like a parent, because we do, he shakes his head like we do. 
but still it says, you know what? That's my son. And you know what? I am proud of all seven of my kids. So number one, love your children and love them unconditionally. Then the second thing about a godly portrait of a mother is to teach your children. Now, again, when we talk about teaching, you know, this is another thing that parents have fallen into the trap of is we have fallen into this trap as parents that it's the church's responsibility, it's the school's responsibility, it's the, it's the world's responsibility. No, guys, biblically, it is our responsibility as parents to teach our children. Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is older, we not depart from him. Now, let me, just, let, me, let me just say this, guys, about that. That is not a promise from God that your children will always walk in the ways of God. So many, so many preachers have misquoted that verse and said, you know what, that is a promise from God that, you know what, if you train them the right way, listen, they will always walk in the ways of God all the days of their life. No, that's not what it's saying. The teaching that we give them as parents will never leave them. And we need to realize as parents, guys, again, we're going to leave a legacy in our children's life one way or the other, either a good legacy or a bad legacy. And again, that legacy that we leave is all going to be based on what we teach them as kids. Why do you think we have a nursery here at First Baptist Church of Trenton? To teach them. Listen, I'm about to be a grandpa. Again, hard to believe, 28 years old, I'm going to be a granddad. <laughs> <laughs> Visitors, if you're visiting this, I'm, I'm, this is every week, so don't, don't think I've lost it because this is like this all the time. I just have fun, amen. amen. But, but, you know, Daisy, they've been singing to her. They've been quoting scripture to her. You know why? Because Daisy hears it. This is why it drives me crazy when people deny the existence of God. They've never seen a child born. They've never seen the fact that, you know what, you, you're watching a human being formed inside your womb and growing. How do you explain that away? But again, we start them in the womb. You've heard people say, you know what, I've been going to church since I was nine months, in mom's, you know, nine months before I was born. But again, Daisy's been hearing the, the music and, and the songs, and she's been hearing the verses being quoted to her, and she's been hearing mom's voice and dad's voice and grandma's voice, or Nona's voice, sorry, <laughs> and Pap's voice, and, and I'm going to share this real quick and I'll move on. She shared with me when we were gone on that weekend and, and Brother Joe preached for us and she said, she, the, Daisy's always moving when Pap's preaching, that's me, that's Pap, not Grandpa, Pap, <laughs> whatever, that's fine, <laughs> so I'm Pap. But she said when Joe preached, she didn't move the whole time. But the very next Sunday, she was moving like crazy. Because she knows Grandpa's voice or Pap's voice. <laughs> and again, guys, we need to understand that, you know what? Start them as early as possible, teaching them the ways of God. Deuteronomy chapter 6 teaches that, church. You teach them when you lie down. You teach them when you wake up, when you're sitting down. You teach them as they're coming. You teach them as they're going. Sun up to sundown, we're teaching them the ways of God. Because we understand, and please get this, church, if we don't teach them to follow God, the world will teach them not to follow him. I promise you that. Because they're doing it now. Guys, teach them to make right choices. But you can't make the choices for them. That's why one of the favorite ones I liked was, I blame myself for my children's mistakes, my kids' mistakes. Guys, moms, dads, please listen to me. Don't blame yourself for your children's mistakes. If you taught them the right way, do not blame yourself for their mistakes. If you tell them not to touch a hot stove because it's going to burn their hand and they do it anyways, is that your fault? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. If you teach them not to swing from a ceiling fan and they do it anyways, is that your fault if they fall and hurt themselves? If you tell them not to throw baloney up into a ceiling fan and they do it, <laughs> these are all real life stories I'm sharing, guys. <laughs> Y'all think I'm joking. Not the ceiling fan hanging from the ceiling fan. I'm talking about tossing baloney up into it. <laughs> but guys, again, teaching them to make the right choices, but guys, you can't make the choices for them. They have to make the right choices. But again, we have a responsibility to teach them to make those right choices. And guys, the, like I've already said, guys, the greatest choice we can ever teach them to make is place their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. 
to make sure they know that what their eternal, their, their eternal salvation, to know that who Christ is and what Christ did for them. Because we can teach them to make all the other right choices and they get that one wrong, guys, and again, we failed. So number one, love your kids. Number two, teach your kids. And then number three, pray for your kids. And this is where I really, really, really want to encourage, especially, especially moms today. There's a story in Matthew 15 where this mother comes to Jesus and her daughter is, she's, she's possessed with a devil. She's got a devil in her. And she comes and she's crying out. And she said, the first thing she says, Lord, have mercy on me. And then she is crying out on behalf of her daughter because she sees the, the, the effect that this, 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 the devil possession is having in her, de- in her daughter's life. But I love the, the passage of Scripture in Matthew 15, 22, all the way to 28. She is so persistent in her prayer. She doesn't give up praying to Jesus and asking Jesus to help her with her daughter. And this is what I want to encourage you today, moms. Don't give up praying for your kids. The devil is going to convince you and lie to you that, you know what, if God cared about you, why is he not hearing your prayer? If God truly cared about you and if God truly loved you, why is he not listening to you when you pray? I'm here to tell you that is a lie straight from the pit of hell, and I'm promising you this morning, God Almighty is hearing your prayers. God Almighty is listening to you cry out to him, and one day God Almighty will answer your prayers. I am convinced, I am convinced, I am convinced. Some of you have been praying for your kids for years, and you are just waiting for them to walk through the back doors of this sanctuary on a Sunday morning. And when they do, you are going to have a spell like you have never had before. You are going to have a shouting time like you have never had before. Because you didn't give up praying. In that passage of Scripture, I love verse 28. Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it even unto thee as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole. Can somebody say amen this morning? Because Jesus heard her prayer. Jesus heard her cry. Jesus knew her situation. By the way, nothing happening in your life today is taking God by surprise. He knows that you've got wayward children today. He knows that you've got wayward grandchildren. But he also knows there's coming a day, amen? Listen, our our pain may endure for a night, but guess what's coming in the morning? Joy. And you know what that joy is? They pull into this parking lot, they come through those double doors, and they walk through those back doors. That's joy. Don't give up. Keep praying for your children. Keep praying that God would get a hold of their hearts. Pray that God would, again, would protect your kids from from those demonic forces. God, listen to me, parents. Pray that God would surround your kids with with people of like faith, people that will encourage them and strengthen them in the Lord. Pray for your children's spouse. Pray for your children's future. And pray that all the days of their life that your children walk in the ways of God. But never stop praying. Paul is saying in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. That's the most amens I've gotten in a long time. (laughs) The babies get it, see? Amen? Pray without ceasing. Pray that God would give them joy. You know, pray that God would just, again, just, just do great things in their life and through their life. And, and, and pray that God would always have your children to have a grateful, thankful spirit. Now, kids, I, I say all that to say this to you today. Today is Mom's Day. So the only thing my wife is doing is, because I can't convince her otherwise, is she's finishing her garden today. And she said maybe, if it's not too hot. But you know what, kids? No, no, number one, and, and I, it, was, it blessed my heart this morning, 8 o'clock. Some of you know Tammy and Delmer Sparks and Caden. He come up and sit next to me. And, and I said, have you done anything special for your mom today? And he said, well, no, not really. He said, I, I hugged her. And I said, you know what? That's probably the best gift you could give your mom is a hug. And just say, you know what, mom, I love you. Or if that doesn't work, wash your feet, rub her feet. <laughs> Amen, moms? 
Just say thank you, Mom, for being who you are. Thank you, Mom, for providing food and shelter and clothing. Man. You know what? Thank you, Mom, for being such a great mom. You know, thank you, Mom, that you're not like the lions that eat their young. <laughs> thank you, Mom, that you're always loving and compassionate. Thank you, Mom, that you always help me. Thank you, Mom, that you, you teach me. Thank you, Mom, that you pray for me. And thank you most of all, Mom, that you love Jesus. And because you love Jesus, now I love Jesus. That's what I loved about Faith's song. You know, Mama taught me how to, she taught me about Jesus. She taught me how to sing. She taught me about Jesus. And guys, again, that's what we need to be doing. I want to close with this, guys. Teddy Roosevelt said this about moms. When all is said, it is the mother, and the mother only who is the better citizen than the soldier who fights for this country. The successful mother, the mother who does her part in rearing and training aright right the boys and girls who are to be the men and women of the next generation. It is of a greater use to the community and occupies, if she would only realize it, a more honorable as well as a more important position than any man in it. The mother is the one supreme asset of the national life. It is more important by far than the successful statesman or businessman or artist or scientist. You see, moms, you're important. Your kids need you. The church needs you. And see, God has gifted you and blessed you. And again, when you portray a godly mother by loving your kids, teaching your kids, and praying with your kids, and praying for your kids, I love Proverbs 31, 24, 28. Proverbs 31, 28. Her children arise and call her blessed. And her husband also, and he praiseth her. I praise God this morning. Veronica Lee Smith, the mother of our children. You know, because without her, number one, I, I pray that I live a whole lot longer, or she lives a whole lot longer than me, because if she goes, I am going to be a deer in the headlights, man. Set <laughs> Amen. And I'm able to call her blessed. You know why? Because I know how much she loves our children. I know how much she's going to love our grandbaby and the other 75 grandkids we have in the future. <laughs> when you have that many kids, you're going to expect that many grandbabies. So just, we're going to grow a church just with our kids and grandkids. I mean, so just get used to that as well. But you know what? And I know her children arise and call her blessed too. Yeah, they drive her crazy. But you know what? She drives them crazy too. She's shaking her head yes because she agrees. I drive her crazy, and she drives me crazy. But you know what? We still call her blessed because we know how important of a role she plays in our home. And moms, you play a very, very, very important role in your kids' lives. Don't ever forget that. Love your kids, teach your kids, and pray for your kids. And most of all, it has to start with you. It has to start with you. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? You know, it's hard to teach your children about Jesus if you don't even know who Jesus is. It's hard to teach them about salvation if you've never had salvation. It's hard to teach your kids about eternal life if you've never received eternal life. So with that being said, let's bow our heads. Close our eyes. Every head's bowed. Every eye's closed.